Jerry Fletcher has theories. The whole Vietnam War was fought over a bet that Howard Hughes lost to Aristotle Onassis. Some would call his theories crazy. You're telling me that NASA is going to kill the president of the United States with an earthquake. But not exactly the kind of thing a Secret Service agent can, like, just throw himself on top of. He writes them in his newsletter. This is our third issue this year, conspiracy theory. He sends them out. <laughs> Look, I feel kind of naked back here. Could we get out of here? Please don't tell me you're naked back there. No, it's just a bigger speech. Could we go? And she is the only one he trusts. I've loved you since the first time I ever saw you. Jerry, you don't love me. I don't? Now, one of his theories is true. Probably not. Only he doesn't know which one. I must have hit a nerve with one of those articles in there. But if with one of those articles in there. But his enemies do. The 1997 film Conspiracy Theory was not a major blockbuster despite having real star power, but it did make more than a few people think there might be something to all this talk of black ops, government black bags, and sinister forces at work behind the scenes. For the truth abhors a vacuum, and all too often when one exists, someone is always there to fill in the blanks with what seems more ludicrous than logical, and we are awash these days in such ideas. Uh, let us make some logic of it all, if you will. Welcome to Midpoint, Associate Professor at the University of Miami Political Science Department and co-author of the book American Conspiracy Theories. Looking at over a century of these considerations, Joe Usinski joins us today. Joe, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Is that not just the easiest way to put down conspiracies? Nature abhors that vacuum, and if we don't know what it is, darn it, we're gonna, somebody's going to put something in there that just has to make sense because we have to bridge that gap between A and B. Well, anytime anything happens, people are going to make up an explanation for it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be conspiratorial. So if a building comes down or if there's a shooting in the street or if there's something funny that happens politically, some people will come up with an explanation for it, but other people will come up with an explanation that posits some secret dark group, you know, smoking cigars in the back room and pulling strings. So the question we wanted to get to is why do some people come up with those conspiracy explanations and other people come up with other types of explanations? All right, so let's talk about the explanations here. I'm guessing that you're talking about political ex uh, explanations or else little green men explanations, somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> Sure. I mean, think about the Kennedy assassination. Some people believe that Oswald was the lone shooter. Other people believe that uh, maybe Castro did it, maybe the Soviets did it, maybe maybe President Johnson did it. So, But there's a difference between those two groups of people, those who believe the single gunman story and those who believe you know some other variation of the story. So we want to know what it is that makes those conspiracy people tick. Why then, and again, here's part of the conspiracy people and why they tick, why do we hang on to conspiracy theories even when in front of us there's a tremendous amount of evidence that it's just not there? I mean, I'll even go to Roswell, for instance. There's never been any evidence whatsoever that we've been visited, although you'll find people today who will swear, stand on the stack of Bibles, and say the aliens were here. Makes no difference about the facts. Yeah, absolutely. And the same could be said of, of the Kennedy assassination. I mean, 50 years are, have still gone by. We still don't know who the real killer is if it isn't Oswald. Same thing with Roswell. You know, baked into conspiracy theories is this difficulty to show that they're not true. So if I say there's some secret group that's doing stuff and covering up their tracks, well, it makes perfect sense that confirming evidence wouldn't come to light over time. So for that reason, you can't disprove them. And that's one reason why they'll linger forever. Do Another reason is that it's just very difficult to dissuade people from their most cherished beliefs. If you're convinced that the CIA killed Kennedy or that uh, Bush was behind 9-11, there's really nothing anyone could do to change your mind. You have to want to do that yourself. And there's no real evidence that's ever going to... Um, make you uh, give up that conspiracy theory. I think part of it is you mentioned 9-11, of course. There's a number of documentary films out there that claim to have the inside word on 9-11, and every single one of the theories have been consistently disproven over and over again. So why is it that we just have this, what seems to be a, a disparate number of conspiracy theorists here in America than over any place else? Well, polls today even show that it's about 25% of the population believes in some form of 9-11 truth theory. Um, and about 60 to 80% believe in some sort of form of uh, Kennedy assassination theory. So these theories are held by wide groups of people. And like I said, it's tough to, to make people change their minds about something. If they're convinced, there's not a lot you're going to be able to do. 
But that goes the same for other opinions as well. If you're a Republican, someone's not going to come up to you and convince you to become a Democrat today, and vice versa. So conspiracy theories are like other types of political opinions. They're how we understand our, our political world and our, our relations with power. So just being given a piece of evidence doesn't mean you're going to believe it. And most likely, you, you're probably going to double down on your conspiracy beliefs and reject that evidence. Is it fair to say then that these conspiracy theories do have a, a habit of twisting history, perverting it, if you will, because a lot of times we see the conspiracy theories sooner or later sometimes wind up in some version of what people call the truth. That's absolutely true. I mean, if you were to ask people nowadays about what they know about the Kennedy assassination, it probably came from Oliver Stone's movie JFK. Um, and that but, would be frighteningly horrible to understand because that movie was rife with so much. There's so much that was wrong in it. <laughs> absolutely. Most of that movie was made up, but it seems to a lot of people who watch it nowadays that it's real history, and it isn't. Um, but even though a lot of people believe in conspiracy theories, there are good reasons that people should believe in conspiracy theories sometimes. Conspiracy theories can be good. It's good to have a healthy skepticism of our government. We want to keep them on their toes. It's good to be uh, skeptical of powerful corporations and international groups like the UN. So conspiracy theories are one way that we do that. It's one way to be skeptical and to, uh, to be that counterweight to very powerful groups. About 20 seconds left. Is it fair to say that most conspiracy theories do revolve around politics and political power? Absolutely. They are one way that people try to understand um, what people who have power are doing with that power when we're not looking. By the way, Joe, I have to ask, is there any one conspiracy theory you believe in? Oh, I believe in a whole bunch of them, but I don't <laughs> think I'm unlike other people. I believe in, in some, and I don't believe in others. So. Will we find out about which ones you believe in in the book, or is that going to be kept a closely guarded secret that we have to worry it, about the conspiracy? Well, the conspiracy is that you have to buy the book. Ah, okay. See, we always knew there had to be a payoff somewhere down at the end. By the way, the book is called American Conspiracy Theories. It is coming out on September the 4th. i got a feeling a lot of people are going to want to read this book just to see if they fit in somewhere. Joe, pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much. Good luck with the book. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. All right, no conspiracy theory here. Next hour on Midpoint, the charge that certain wealthy people have conspired to own every vote and change the course of America. Next up, what may rank as a true turning point in the gun debate? That's on News Call here on Midpoint.